In section 10.4, we will be focusing on secants and tangents. After watching this video, you will be able to identify secant and tangent lines, recognize common internal and common external tangents, solve common internal and common external tangent problems, and solve what we call walk-around problems. Let's first start off by identifying and defining a secant line. A secant line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly two points. Every secant contains a chord of the circle. So if we have these two points A and B, our secant line is going to pass through those two points. And as you can see, we have chord AB contained within the secant line. A tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So if I draw this point C here, that line right there is a tangent line. And the point at which the tangent line intersects the circle is called the point of tangency, or sometimes you could call it the point of contact. We know that something special happens when we have our tangent line. A tangent line is always perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. Or, in reverse, if a line is perpendicular to a radius at its outer endpoint, then it is tangent to the circle. Let's talk about the two-tangent theorem. The two-tangent theorem states that if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then those segments are congruent. Let's prove why this two-tangent theorem is true. We're given circle T in this diagram, and we know that segments GR and GN are tangent segments. Points N and R are then points of tangency or points of contact. And these two tangent segments are being drawn from the same external point G. So we want to prove that those two tangents, GR and GN, are congruent. I constructed radii TR and TN. We know that all radii in a given circle are congruent, meaning those two segments are congruent. And then I constructed segment TG. We can use reflexive property on that segment. We know that any time we draw a radius to a point of tangency or a point of contact, we have right angles that form there, which then means that these two triangles, NTG and RTG, are congruent by the HL postulate. Therefore, we can say that segments GR and GN are congruent by CPCTC. Let's take a look at this first sample problem. So we're told here that AB and AC are tangent to the circle. Right away I'd be thinking, okay, B is that point of tangency and C is also the point of tangency. So if we connect that to our radius, which in this case here is OB, we know for a fact that we have a right angle. And same with OC. So I'm filling in the given information there. We have our right angles. Now, we should notice that segments AB and AC are tangent segments, and they're drawn from this external point A, which means, from the two-tangent theorem above, the segments are congruent. So we can set 4x plus 8 equal to 84, and solve that to get that x has a value of 19. But since we want to find OB in the end, we should recognize that OC and OB are radii of the circles, so they're congruent, so we can substitute 19 in for x to get a final answer of 10. Let's move on to the second page. Now we're going to talk about common tangents. A common tangent is a line that is tangent to two circles, but it's not necessarily going to pass through the same point. So I want you to take a moment to think about the following and try to draw out a picture for each one of those. No common tangents, we would have to have one circle physically inside of the other. One common tangent, we would have to have a circle inside of the other intersecting that circle at one point. For two common tangents, we would have a Venn diagram looking figure here. So you notice those two tangents intersect the circles at exactly one point each. And they share that tangent line, those two lines. 
Three common tangents. The circles would have to be externally tangent because we could draw one tangent through that point. And then similarly to what we did th with the two common tangents, we can draw those outer tangents there, the external ones, above and below. And then finally, for four common tangents, we can draw the outer tangents, the external ones, and then the internal ones, which form an X shape. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.